Today on Living Local 15, we explore the deck, a popular restaurant that sits right off the river in downtown. We get some great reading suggestions from the library for National Read a Book Day, and I take you inside of Ivy Tech's campus. Fashion, food, and fun. You're watching Living Local 15 with your host, Jessica Williams. Hello and welcome to Living Local 15. I'm Jessica Williams and I am so happy that you are here with me today. I hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day yesterday and got some rest and just really soaked it in and ready for a brand new day today because I know that I am. And today I wanted to share with you something fun we're going to do on the show, which is called Social Shout Out. And what this is, is an interactive way for you to participate with the show on social media. And so as we are going out and about trying these brand new places, these restaurants and exploring the city, I want to know what you think. Have you been there? What do you think about it? and give me recommendations, okay? Because I am looking at places to go and it's gonna be a fun thing. So I wanna know your experiences as well. And as we're talking all things lifestyle, same thing. If you're gonna try something new and you're excited about it, shout it out on social. Because, you know, it's a great way that, like I said yesterday, we're gonna get to know each other. And who knows, maybe something that you shout out will be featured on the show. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And we're going to do giveaways, okay? So as we are trying out these restaurants, we want for you to have an opportunity to try it out as well. And so we have gift cards that we're gonna be giving away to these top restaurants. So I will have more details about the giveaways throughout the shows, and you can enter on our social media channel, okay? So we have new social medias. That is at livinglocal15, and like I said, shout it out because we want to hear from you. We have such a great show for you today, so stay tuned and I will see you after the break. Follow us on social media at Living Local 15. I'm here at The Deck, a beautiful outside restaurant with an American theme in downtown Fort Wayne. And I'm gonna to talk to Ben. Hey, Ben. Hi. Ben is the co-owner of this beautiful place. So tell me about the aesthetic and the vibe that people get when they come here. Um, casual, um, friendly, not changing the world on food or drink, but just giving a nice, um, kind of out of the way vibe as far as what you might normally experience in a uh, central city type place. Uh, combination of river and trees and flowers and everything else just convince you that you're not sitting in the middle of a parking lot. Just a good, nice, casual, friendly place for you, your friends, your family, coworkers, anybody. Come in, grab something to eat, something to drink, hang out, and uh, just enjoy some time with your friends. Nice, well let's head over to the bar. Okay. <laughs> So this is your main bar over here? Yep. Uh, probably put this in in 2007, 2008, something along those lines. Yes. A couple of years in after we did the actual dining room. Nice. And you have prepared a couple of options for me. Tell me about what I'm going to taste. Um, these were two that made the list this year. We are playing around with some ideas this spring. Uh, Nelson's Paloma to your left sort of a take on a on a paloma and then on your right uh affectionately known as uh the huggy bear okay which if you have a uh, uh if you can pick up the reference to 
the uh, uh, Starsky and Hutch film that Huggy Bear the character was played by uh, Snoop Dogg. So this is sort of a play on gin and juice. Okay, awesome. Well, let's try the Huggy Bear first. Cheers. Hmm. And what liquor is in this? Uh, that is Hotel Tango Gin, which happens to be uh, locally produced, coming in off of uh, their little pub out on Illinois Road. And it's good because it's not too sweet. You know, looking at it is like, woo! But it's, it has a really good balance. I really like that. Okay, now the Paloma. It's really light and refreshing. It has a little spritzy taste to it. We've uh, been trying to figure out a way to use the the soft drink squirt for a okay. number of years. Okay. It's kind of old school. <laughs> I enjoy squirt mm -hmm. quite a bit. And so squirt sort of became an element in in the tequila, grapefruit sort of thing that is mm -hmm. typical in a Paloma. And this is a tequila drink. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so hard. Okay, guys, we have the Paloma, Paloma, and the Huggy Bear. I think my favorite is actually the Huggy Bear, which is so surprising. Yeah. Will you show me more of this place? Okay, come on. <laughs> All right, so how long have you guys been around? I mean, Don Hall, you have about eight different locations around the greater Fort Wayne area. Uh, Hall's was 1946. Uh, the Gas House, which was the beginning of our time in downtown, was about 58. Um, Takaoka, which is our uh, hibachi steakhouse, came in uh, upstairs of the Gas House in 78 and then the first pieces of the deck we put together and got going in 2004. Okay, so, so 18 uh, years. It's wow. been a while. Wow, uh, and you're hit. sitting right on the St. Mary River? St. Mary's River. Yeah. The mighty St. Mary's. Currently, a little bridge construction, but uh, those guys are doing good work and hopefully be uh, done and gone uh, before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're making great expansions out here in the patio area. I mean, there's so many seating spots. It's supply and demand. And as, as people have been drawn to what we're doing and enjoyed what we're doing, and we like the idea of giving little individual spots for people to sit kind of your own little backyard patio. It's just not in your backyard. Yeah, and I love the history um, with you guys. I mean, fourth generation family owned business. And this is just one of the many that people can enjoy and experience in Fort Wayne. And so show me this area over here. What's happening over here? Um, just again, another taking the same thing that we were doing here in and what for half of a century was just a parking lot. And I mean, it kind of still is, there's still some stripes, uh, but kind of came over into this, you know, the side yard, I guess, if you want to call it that. And again, just, we had some trees, which gives you some shade. And then just a couple of spots for people to just sort of, you know, hang out in small groups. So you can come out and have a party. I mean, this is nice. You have the lights going and the music and the drinks. Yeah. I mean, look, outdoor picnic. This is the place to come. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. This is so nice. People like it. Yeah. People like it. And again, it kind of makes you forget that you're, you know, really in the, I mean, not, maybe not the center of downtown yeah. Fort Wayne, but you're still in downtown Fort It's Wayne. an escape. It is a little mm -hmm. bit. I mean, and there's enough that you just sort of forget that there's a road there and a road there and, yeah. and you just kind of get sucked into it it's nice yeah and i'm loving the breeze i am loving this breeze mm -hmm. okay well let's try some food sure come on next week we continue the fun at the deck by tasting some yummy dishes from their menu living local 15 proudly driven by the kelly automotive group
You're watching Living Local 15. Reading brings a new world to life. It enlightens us and gives us new perspectives. So today we celebrate National Read a Book Day with a special guest in our studio, Aja Michael Keller. Hi. Hi, thanks for having Welcome. me. Welcome, how you. are you? I'm great. Good, well Aja is the new Director of Communications mm -hmm. at the Allen County Public Library. You know, there's so many amazing books here and we have so much to celebrate on this day. So tell me what excites you about reading? What I love about reading is being transported to different worlds and experiencing new perspectives. And so I think this day really allows us to embrace things maybe we have not, authors we've not read before or storylines we've not explored. Um, so it's a real opportunity to try something new. Yes. And so we brought you some, some different items here out of our um, Hispanic Heritage Awareness Month collection art. We have a special book list. So. Yes, and what I love first about these books is how vibrant they are. You know, they really make you excited about wanting to read and get to know the story. So why don't you tell us about some of these selections that you brought? So I brought a, a pretty big range here and I'm, I'm excited about a lot of them. The first one that really caught my eye was this one, Trejo. It's by Danny Trejo and he's a, a pretty famous actor. And I did not know, but he has actually, um, his, his book is about his time, his, his drug addiction, his time in prison, and then how he rose to being an American film star. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that, that it's a memoir, and I think that that might be something to really, you know, inspire people to see how someone can achieve their dreams, even with some pretty big challenges. Right. Um, some of the books are, this one right here is really interesting. This is um, Olga Dies Dreaming, and mm -hmm. we actually have this... Um, in our adult fiction section. Mm -hmm. And it is about a Puerto Rican brother and sister. They live in New York and their families, their um, parents were revolutionaries. And so, but they have grown up in, uh, in, and achieved a level of privilege here in the United States. And so it's about them sort of understanding their identity and it all takes place in the lead up to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. And um, actually there's been discussion about this um, maybe becoming a television series. So that would be really interesting. That would. Um, you know, get out in front, read the book before it hits the screen. Because you know the book is already, always, always more better. juicy. <laughs> it's always better. Yeah, it's more vivid for sure. Um, of course, we've got a cookbook here and that oh. one is um, very exciting. That is called Mi Cocina and it is by Rick Martinez who is a New York Times contributor and um, a chef. And so mm -hmm. this is his first cookbook and he actually went to seven different regions of Mexico to explore just the diverse culinary culture mm -hmm. of Mexico. And so I think I'm really excited about this one. Right. Um, and then I brought a couple of books for the young folks as well. Oh, I love that, because you have to inspire them young to start on yes, this reading yes. journey. Yes, yes, and what's yes. great about, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're What's good. great about these books um, is that they, several of them are in both English and Spanish. So, you know, um, a young person who is learning the language can have it in the language that they're familiar mm -hmm. with, but also can practice in, in English or vice versa mm -hmm. to um, encourage that bilingual culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so this one right here is Miss Quinces, and um, I am, I'm intrigued by this one. She is a 15-year-old. <laughs> um, she thought she was going to summer camp for the summer, and instead she goes to Honduras, where her family is from. Oh. And in doing so, learns that they're going to be doing a quinceañera to celebrate her turning 15. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of, she, she rides that line between, um, you know, growing up here in the United States and her American culture and, you know, up against her... Uh, her Latino culture uh -huh. and how she develops her identity in that and you know family struggles and successes in that. So it's actually a graphic novel, mm -hmm. um, which means it is told <gasps> in almost like in a visual way. Oh, the, that um, illustration is beautiful. So that is really enticing to a lot of our young mm -hmm. readers um, to help them visualize and follow yes. the story. Well, these are exciting books to recommend to our viewers. So thank you so much for bringing these in. Now, Allen County Public Library has a lot of events coming up for this fall. So share with us some of the activities that people can participate in. Sure. So we have, um, for Hispanic Heritage Month, we have... Uh, actually a few events happening at the library. Um, one that I'm really excited about is called Frida for All, and it's a partnership mm -hmm. with, uh, the local, with a couple of local entities, Sofia's Portico and um, the Mexica Arts Group. Mm -hmm. And so they are having 
free to look alike concerts or oh. look alike contests. Um, yeah. There's going to be some group reading and then also storytelling. And then immediately after that, this is on uh, September 17th, immediately after that, there's going to be a, a Mexican uh, dance troupe that's gonna perform in the theater. Hey, that's fun. And then what's really, really exciting for me, hot off the presses, they gave it to me as I was walking out the door. Look at this. Is our Here fall programming guide. Yes. So all of those programs that, um, the ones that are near and dear to your heart that we offer regularly are mm -hmm. in here, also some new and exciting ones. So I really recommend that folks get out to their branch or go mm -hmm. online and find the, uh, fall library program guide so okay. that they can see just how many hundreds and hundreds of programs we're offering here in Allen County. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aja. It's so good to meet you. Thank you for sharing these wonderful selections with us. And you guys check out everything that the Allen County Public Library has to offer and we'll be right back. This segment sponsored by Ivy Tech. I am at Ivy Tech Fort Wayne, which offers fast and flexible training for the career that you want. And I have here Frank with me, who is an instructor of the technology program. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. Good. So we are thrilled to learn more about the program. So can you tell me about it? So I'm the program chair of the HVAC technology program, and I've been here for a little over 11 years. And our program uh, specifically is designed to take students that don't know anything at all about the trade and help them to get their first job in HVAC. And if they go on to the second year program, then we train them uh, to be prepared for a journeyman's exam, which they can take here in Allen County. And once you become a journeyman HVAC technician, you're pretty much set for life. Yeah, and so you guys are setting them up for which career paths? Like, give some examples of the direction that they can go after they complete your program. Well, there's a lot of different directions that students take, but at first, you generally want to work in the field either as an installer or a service technician. And from there, you could really expand into a lot of other different roles. You could sometime open your own business, you can work as a uh, salesperson or an estimating role. You could work on the supply chain side of the business. So there's a lot of different job descriptions that you can take when you learn the basics of HVAC. But I always recommend for students to, even if they think that they're gonna go into more of like a white collar career description, that they'd spend some time in the field. Okay. Because people that spend time in the field, even if they move into a management role, they seem to have a little bit more depth uh, in their ability to lead others if they've been in the trenches themselves. And personally, I've been in the trenches for plenty of years myself. I wasn't always planning on becoming an educator, sort of stumbled onto it, but here I am. Yes, and that shows just the quality of what the students will get if they have instructors like you and kind of take them yes. through that step-by-step -step All of our process. instructors, uh, we have a credentialing standard that they need to meet, which has to do with degrees and experience in the field, but I sort of have my own unwritten credentialing standard yeah. <laughs> that before you teach a class where you're teaching other students how to do service calls and do troubleshooting, I want you to have done that at least a thousand times, which is basically about five years of experience in the field. So any of our instructors have at least that uh, amount of street cred, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Ivy Tech, that person that's standing in front of you to be your instructor has been there, has done that, and is uh, ready to share that knowledge. Yeah, I love that, I do. And you guys are really big on making things custom and kind of building the curriculum around a person's interest. So, can, so tell me more about the second year and how you guys do that customizing of electives and things like that. Sure, the first year is really basic, um, but the second year uh, you can choose among a number of electives. We have about 12 electives that we offer on this campus. You only need six to graduate. So you're able to choose the ones that are most in keeping with your career goals. 
So we have courses uh, that are focused on the uh, dynamics of what it's like to own your own business. We have courses that are focused on uh, system design, ductwork design, things like that. And we also get into some of the more complex types of systems like uh, air source heat pumps, geothermal heat pumps, radiant heating systems, uh, stuff like that. So at first we just learn your basic furnace and air conditioner, but then in the second year we get into more specialized types of equipment. Yeah, so who should consider this program? Like if someone's watching and they're like, you know what, I want to get into this industry. Like what, who, who is a qualifying candidate? So if you have uh, a curiosity about mechanical things, you like to work with your hands, you don't mind working outside, um, you enjoy uh, working in a different environment all the time. I mean, that's one of the things that I love about the trade is the variety. Not only do you get on a variety of job sites or uh, you're presented with a variety of problems that you need to solve, but you encounter a variety of people that you're serving. And that, in, in a sense for me, is you know, the most interesting part of my job is some of the characters that you get to run into when you're working in people's houses, working for their businesses, and, and inevitably you're helping people at a time when they're pretty vulnerable and something's going wrong in their life and then they're asking you to come and save them. So once you do that for a while, you kind of get addicted to the idea of you coming in and being the hero. So you get this kind of hero mentality. So um, if that sounds appealing, then, you know, come on over and we'll, you can join the team. That's a really great way of putting it. You are helping people. And so for those who are interested, where, where can they go to enroll? Well, the, the ivytech.edu website. Uh, and you, as soon as you open up the page, it'll tell you how to apply. Uh, and you go through those initial steps you'll meet with an advisor and then they can help you to sign up for classes. Now we've already started our fall semester a couple weeks ago, so uh, you can't get in on the classes that are currently running now, but uh, we have a second eight week uh, batch of courses that are starting up. So the soonest that you could start would be about mid-October. Okay, well look at that, that's wonderful. But we prefer people to start in the fall. Okay. If you could start a little bit later, you, you know, you might be a little bit out of sequence. It might take you a little bit longer to finish your degree mm -hmm. if you don't start in August, but um, we'll get you through. Yeah. A lot of our students, they start off full-time, mm -hmm. they get a job, and then they come back part-time oh. for a couple of reasons. They want to finish their degree because they want to make this a career. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is once they start working in the field, they realize there's a lot more that they need to know. So. Most of my students that come back for uh, second year coursework, they show up at night in their uniform, having worked all day on HVAC equipment and systems, and they're coming here to learn more. Yeah, that's great. So, well, you know, it's a good thing. Frank, I can tell that you enjoy what you do, and I, I do. appreciate you talking with us and sharing more. So if you are interested in learning more, you can go to their website. We'll make sure it's available for you. We'll be right back. This segment sponsored by Ivy Tech. And as we are exploring all of these fun restaurants and things around town, we want for you at home to get in on the fun. So thanks to our friends at Don Hall's Restaurant, we are giving away $50 to a lucky viewer. So you can head over to our social media channels at Living Local 15 to enter into the contest. Good luck. <laughs> and that's it for us today. Remember, it is never too late to live your best life so you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Content segments during today's Living Local 15 were paid for by these sponsors.